Hey, Pretty Girl Club. So this is going to be a story time. This story time is going to be about the time where I thought I was gay. <laughs> so so this happened in the military. And around, this was around 2017. This was my first duty station, Fort Riley, Kansas. You know, I was shipped to my new duty station fresh from AIT. It was April. And then we ended up flying overseas to Germany by like August. I think it was August. And so our, our we left for deployment. It was like a rotation deployment. So it was like a fake deployment. It was like a training. So we got um, shipped to Poland first. So we stayed in Poland for like three or four months out there. Um, my job in the army I was a 92 golf, which is a cook. Worst job to pick, and I only picked that job because I had a degree in hospitality management and my concentration was culinary arts. And I joined the army like thereafter. And I thought my, you know, I was gonna utilize those skills in the army, but I, it, you have no idea. Being a cook is like one of the worst jobs to pick in the army. Do not do it, because it's like, you literally work longer than everybody else because you have to feed everybody from breakfast time to dinner time. So you're you're up prepping and then after they eat, you got to clean up. It's so horrible. And then you still got to do military stuff like PT. Just miserable, right? But anyway, we get shipped over to Poland. We're there for a few months. It was kind of nice. I got to visit Auschwitz and stuff. I don't know if you guys know about that concentration camp from from the Holocaust. It was like one of the most brutal concentration camps. If you look up the uh, Auschwitz or the worst concentration camp in Poland, Auschwitz might pop up. I visited there. It was very sad. Um, but I had an overall a different experience out there. I experienced pretty privilege out there and exotic privilege. I was definitely stalked by one of the Polish, we call them locals because, you know, they're considered the locals of the area and we were just there training on our little camp in our tents or whatever. So when we would go visit in town to see, you know, how Polish people live and go to their restaurants, we went to go eat at one of their pizza places and there's one white local was just, just stalking the shit out of me it was getting scary and we had to be careful because it's, e when it, it's easy for us to get hurt out there or kidnapped or anything so we literally had to walk in groups whenever we would go out to these places and i had i remember this one guy just stalking the shit out of me like it was so scared it was crazy i remember when we went to the local schools and we the army soldiers, they, the students performed for us. They were excited to meet us and everything. They were like, the American soldiers are coming to our school. It was so cute. And they performed Michael Jackson's uh, Thriller, the Thriller dance. It was so cute. Um, I'll play a little clip of them performing for us and stuff. It was a fun experience in Poland.
felt very welcomed and you know they loved us and with me they they ended up i was on their tv stations because they had the news there because they found out you know the military american soldiers are coming to our town and they had the camera crew there and they interviewed me and everything i remember that and a lot of the girls wanted to touch my hair. I had a um, my natural hair out at the time. If y'all remember my 4C hair story, my hair story time, y'all know I was natural around this time because in Europe, there's no black hairstylist and I couldn't find anybody. So hence me wearing my natural hair at this time. So everybody wanted to touch my hair. <laughs> but it was a fun experience over there. Uh, so I, I experienced privileges out there being black and being you know an exotical so you know i'm there there's this one female there that has a huge crush on me she's um i don't know what the term is i'm not in the gay community the dyke the man version of a female who wants to everybody to think she's a man young and may girls dykes i don't know studs right I'm not trying to be offensive. I just don't know the right term to call. But she had a huge crush on me. But I didn't know at Poland. I just saw the way she was treating me. A lot of people were trying to get with me at, around this time too. Because I was new to the um, the company. I had just got a, out of AIT. I'm new to the army. Um and all these guys are trying to hit on me while we're in Poland. And yes, these are married. A lot of these men are married or taken. I'm trying to tell you right now. Even this female who was at this time secretly liked me. She even had a whole thing going on. But she would always give me things randomly. And I didn't think nothing of it at this time in Poland. Because I didn't think girls i wasn't gay so i wasn't even on that i just thought she was really being nice to me because she just liked me i don't know i didn't think that type of like yet but i just noticed she would always do random nice things for me like when i was had i remember i was on my period and i didn't have no tylenol and i was asking people for tylenol and she must have overheard me asking people for tylenol and i remember um i went back to my tent in my bunk and I looked under my pillow, and I saw there was Tylenols there, and it was from her. I was like, oh, that's nice. She didn't have to do that. But that was, you know, a sign. And then I remember one of my friends coming up to me and was like, uh, she, no, no, I think it was her that came up to me. And she was like, I want to talk to you later. I was, because y'all know I'm a cook, so I was in the the area of the tent where we cook in and it's like a dining tent it's a huge dining tent we we the soldiers dine and cook in mind you we're in training so we're like on a camp literally like in tents and stuff like think of a big wedding tent and i was cooking in that and she would be looking at me all the time i would know i would every now and then catch her looking at me just you know, in my head, I'm thinking, but I'm not thinking a crush or anything. I'm just like, she's always looking at me I'm like she must really, she and then she's always smiling real hard at me, like very cringy, just randomly as I pass by her cleaning up and I'm an E4, which means because I had a bachelor's degree, I first out of AIT, I was able to be at E4 rank, which is one rank below a sergeant. So, I pretty much, so you can think of it in civilian terms, almost like a assistant manager. I was like the assistant manager to the soldiers that were underranked of me, that were also cooks. So, she would be watching me cook all the time and tell people, you know, she'd just be watching me work, basically. And... You know, so we're in Poland, whatever. We leave Poland, go to Germany. So Germany is a little bit more fun because we're not in tents anymore. We're in, we're in like these brick buildings now. And you know, it's one step up from it has air conditioning and heat, so that was nice. And the other thing about Germany is they're very sexual, and it's not a, it's like, out, it's public. You'll pass a billboard and see porn and stuff. 
And y'all know how they got soda machines in America, like on the corner or wherever. Instead of soda machines, they have like sex toy machines. It's, it's so wild. And then the public bathrooms over there, like there's no chill. Girls would be in the shower naked, walking around. It's, it's normal over there to be naked and stuff. Like sexuality is not shunned like it is in America. It's not shamed upon. You literally are walking and a girl be have no clothes on. And we, I, it was a culture shock, but you know, it's just different over there. It really is. Um, so, and we were able, we had more places that we were able to go because Poland, I'm not saying they were more third country-ish than Germany, but let's just say we had a bus, so we were able to go to the store in a different way. And I had a little bit more of a privilege to go outside of places that I wasn't supposed to because I was talking to another guy who was actually a sergeant um so he he because he was a sergeant so i was secretly messing around with a sergeant and because he was a sergeant he had access to the vans and he would drive the vans and every night after hours after six o'clock when we were technically considered off duty and we were able to do whatever we wanted to do me and him would sneak off and go places. <laughs> I might make a story time about that on Patreon. On my confessions story. My confession series on Patreon. I think I will do that. Because we need to talk about it. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. So we need to talk about that. But yeah. So. Um, so the girl. We all met back in Germany. She sees me. She's excited to see me and stuff. And she's getting a little bit more closer and closer to me. And I'm starting, at this point, I'm starting to wonder, does she like me? Like, I'm not gay, so I'm, but I'm thinking now, is she, because she's doing a little too much. Like, she's always giving me stuff, always randomly just, because mind you, me and her aren't that close. But we are acquaintance enough to talk to each other. But she, randomly, she'll come to my um, cause we all live together. It's a co-ed environment. So we all sleep in the same building. I can't explain the building. It's like a brick, a really long brick building with bunk beds, like a jail almost. <laughs> and, um, every, and everybody had their private area covered with like their blankets, like, Everybody had made their own little forts, basically, within the building for their own privacy. And every now and then she would come in in my little fort area and see how I'm doing. And watch. I was watching movies on my little iPad. And she would come watch a movie with me randomly. Like, Eventually, one of our mutual friends that we both know, she, one day I walked out of the building because I was going to go to the store. Um, cause we had a little store up the street. We can go and taco trucks and food trucks and all kinds of stuff. I was going to go over there and meet the guy I was talking to, whatever. And I remember my friend was like telling the, the gay girl, I'm looking for her name, the gay girl. We can call her Dee Dee. So I remember my friend, we got, my friend's name was Nikki. Let's just call her Nikki. So Nikki was like, hold up. She pulled me out because she saw me walking, about to walk to the store, mind you. She was already outside of the door that I walked out of with her and Dee Dee, the gay girl that likes me. And she stopped me. Nikki stopped me. And she was like, hold up, hold up. Um, miss in between. Uh, and I was like, yeah, what's up? And um, Nikki was like, she looked at Dee Dee and was like, so you're not going to tell her or you want me to tell her? Because I'll tell her. And I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? What, in my head, I'm like, what's going on here? And Dee Dee was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I was like, Lord, I think I already know what's going on here. I just hope it's not what I think it is because I'm really hoping it's in my head. And then Nikki was like, Dee Dee likes you. I was like, oh, yeah, really? <laughs> like, I didn't know that. I'm like, Really? And then she started blushing D and stuff. I was like, okay. 
And I think something came up. You like girls. And then I was like, I don't know. I like the masculine girls a little bit, I think. Because I, I don't know. I used to think, like, Young and May was cute. Um, I'm trying to think of, because before I left for boot camp, I remember Love and Hip Hop being on. And it was the Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, the episode or the season where that dyke girl from The Wire was on there with her girlfriend, that crazy girl. I forget their names. I remember she was cute thinking that before I left for boot camp. Um, so I said, I don't know if I like girls. I know I don't like girly girls, but I, and then she was, I think she made, she had a big smile on her face. And I don't remember what happened after that, but I do remember, I think it was a day or so later. Um, it was the weekend, so we didn't have to work for real. And I remember we all would hang out in the the diner where the sh- the cooks would cook at, because it was like all the cooks would hang out with, you know, pe- we would all hang out in there because we had that key access. So after hours, we would go into there and drink and do other things that were inappropriate, like not drugs, but. Because we were in the army, we get drug tested. So there were alternatives to that that we would do that wouldn't get us piss tested. We were just being young adults having off time. You know, it is what it is. We couldn't smoke or anything. So we would drink. And I remember getting drunk. Because that German beer is so strong. If y'all haven't been to Germany and drank, their beers, our beers are nothing compared to theirs. So it's nothing to get drunk easy. They say be careful. But I remember us getting, me me getting drunk. Mind you, who's there? I'm there. Nikki's there. Dee's there. And a couple other people are there. We're all drinking and having fun and doing us. Being goofy. You know, we got somebody, one of the boys brought uh, their big TV, that portable TV. And we was just watching TV. Having, kicking it, whatever. And I remember the gay girl doing a little too much, uh, trying to hug me and stuff and touching Philly on me, trying to do that type of thing with me. And I was like, you playing too much, stop it. But And then I started to laugh and like try to play back. And in the midst of all that, we're playing around and play flirting and stuff. In the midst of all that, I remember we just kissed. I don't know. We just kissed. And the alcohol, maybe, yes, yes. So it shocked everybody. It shocked me. It shocked everybody. I was like, whoa. But I liked it. I think, and I thought she was cute. So I, was, I liked it. And we did it again. <laughs> we did it again. And after that, it just kind of came. Well, it didn't become a thing for long. But... Like, I think it was the same night. Because we ended up in the girls' bathroom a few hours later. And she tried to mess with me in the bathroom again. And we ended up messing around, kissing again in the bathroom. And we ended up in the stall doing a little too much. This had to have been the same night because we, we were drunk still. And we ended up in the girls' bathroom. It was a bunch of, it was like five of us in the girls' bathroom. And me and Dee were just kissing and flirting and stuff with each other. And then I remember it getting wild. And I remember her asking me, do you want to do something tonight? She kind of whispered it to me. I was like, like what? And she was like, meet me here at midnight. I was like, okay. And so midnight comes around. And she meets me there. And her, she has a friend with her, another dyke, but she's like a white girl dyke, stud. I don't know what the word is, I'm sorry, but she was like, she likes you too. I was like, oh yeah, white girl, right? I'm like, oh yeah. And they was like, you want to do something with both of us? 
I don't know if that's how it was worded. I just remember that ended up being the conversation. And I was like, okay, I can try anything once. So, it's like midnight, one o'clock. Mind you, the only way we could possibly do this is if we go into the building, which is like co-ed, everybody's in their sleep. But mind you, like I told you guys, everybody had made their own fort, so they, it's their own privacy. So you can't really see nothing if you don't move anybody's sheets. Like everybody has their sh their bunks covered with sheets, so no, everybody has their own privacy basically. So we can get away with it if our sheets are covering our area. And I was like, okay, we can we have to be quiet. And so we went to her bunk room, bunk area, because she had a wider space. For some reason, her space was just wider. And I had a threesome with two girls, two dyke girls. <laughs> that was a wild experience for me. I had fun. I did have fun. I mean, my body didn't, wasn't as aroused. But I and I had fun in general. Like even though I wasn't, I don't know if I wasn't aroused because I was so, so worried about getting more getting caught than anything. Not necessarily the fact that it was two girls. Maybe it was. I don't know. But that's the first time I ever did something like that with two girls. <laughs> but word did get around, and it caused kind of like a little bit of an issue with the guy I was talking to and the girl she was talking to obviously and it was a hot whole hot mess I will do a story time though on the guy the sergeant guy on patreon but yeah so and then from that point on yeah I'm gonna do a story time on patreon because something happened within this time frame I had got pregnant that's going to be a Patreon story time. If y'all want to hear it, I will do that probably in the next day or two. About that in the Confessions series. <laughs> but I ended up getting pregnant by Sergeant Guy. But anyway. um, Yeah, that's pretty much the story. I thought I ever since then, I always looked at studs a certain way. Like. Maybe I'm attracted to them. Maybe I'm in denial because they're girls and I'm in denial of being gay. I don't know. I kind of joke around. I don't know if I'm... I don't know, y'all. I always thought because it was the masculine version of a female that technically I'm still attracted to masculine. So I'm technically... Not gay because I'm only attracted to them because they look like a guy. They're just a cute guy. So I kind of use that as an excuse that I'm not gay because I'm not attracted to fems. You feel me? So that's all I'm saying. I don't know if I'm bi or not. <laughs> I just know what I like and I'm attracted to. But yeah, that's my story on the time. You know, I thought I was gay. But yeah, what do you guys think? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening. <laughs>